what is empathy? And how can we understand its meaning? To answer those questions, we'll need to look at three things. How empathy differs from sympathy, the characteristics of empathy, and the types of empathy you can experience. First, empathy and sympathy are often confused, but there's an important distinction. Sympathy is recognizing someone else's experience and feeling pity for them. Empathy is putting yourself in the other person's shoes. It's understanding the experience as if it were your own. Empathy depends on three characteristics, listening, understanding, and openness. First, you need to listen empathetically. That means paying close attention to what the other person is communicating. It's listening to what they say and how they say it. An empathetic listener notices a person's words, tone, pitch, and nonverbal cues. Second, empathy requires understanding. Someone who is empathetic will use their imagination to picture what things might be like for the other person. Finally, you'll need to be open and non-judgmental. That means letting go of your opinions so that you can see things through someone else's eyes. Now, let's look at that final point, the three types of empathy. First, there's cognitive empathy, which is the most rational form of empathy. With cognitive empathy, you'll take on the other person's perspective to identify and comprehend their emotions, but you won't experience them for yourself. Then there's emotional empathy, which is described as catching someone's feelings. With emotional empathy, you'll physically experience the other person's feelings as though they were your own. Think about how you might experience this when you cry during a movie. Finally, there's compassionate empathy, which is action-oriented. You'll understand the emotion, feel alongside the other person, and be driven to help. It takes the middle ground. You won't be as detached as someone who experiences cognitive empathy, but you also won't get as overwhelmed as someone who experiences emotional empathy. With compassionate empathy, you'll feel just enough so that you know how to help. So, empathy is seeing things through someone else's eyes. It's about connecting with the other person and understanding what they're going through. It takes imagination. And if you can find the middle ground, you might be able to help the other person feel a little better. In the workplace, empathy is an essential skill. Performance and morale depend on how well a company, its staff, and its leaders can communicate. Without empathy, that communication falls short. Think about it. When communicating with customers, you need to see things through their eyes. If you don't, you might appear indifferent to their needs or complaints. Or you might develop products or services that have no value. As a leader, you also need to empathize with your team to connect with them. If you don't understand your employees, you can't give them the appropriate support, motivation, or guidance. Finally, when communicating with coworkers, it's important to understand where your colleagues are coming from. If you don't, you might deliver an insensitive message or waste time talking at someone instead of with them. Here are five key benefits of communicating with empathy. First, empathy elevates customer satisfaction. When you empathize with your customers, you're more likely to develop the right services, products, and marketing materials. When communicating with customers directly, you're better at understanding what they're going through and that can help you respond appropriately. Second, empathy boosts leadership success. To connect with staff members, you need to recognize their feelings, motivations, and viewpoints. As an empathetic leader, you'll understand how much guidance your team needs and how to inspire them to do their best work. Third, empathy fuels productive conversations. When you consider someone else's emotional state, you can deliver a more sensitive response. When you recognize where someone is coming from, you remove misunderstandings. Through empathy, you'll encourage others to open up and your conversations will be more productive. Fourth, empathy helps us build strong workplace relationships. If a staff member appears uneasy, upset, or distressed, you'll likely notice. You can then put yourself in their position and understand their perspective. That cultivates a supportive work environment and builds a stronger relationship. Finally, empathy improves staff morale. An empathetic workplace fosters a sense of belonging. Employees feel heard and appreciated. 
Their needs and concerns are recognized. As a result, staff members do their best work and display higher levels of job satisfaction. When we communicate with empathy, we make a conscious attempt to listen, understand, and experience someone else's reality. By striving for this in the workplace, you'll build better relationships and experience greater success. Empathy is at the root of successful communication. It's about putting yourself in another's place so that you can slow down, listen, and connect. So let's take a look at how empathy fuels successful conversations, how to add empathy to your communication, and how to respond with care. First, when we communicate with empathy, we open the door to conversations built on respect, honesty, and collaboration. Respect happens because, even when you disagree, you give your conversation partner your full attention. You listen actively, you recognize their emotions, and you respond with those emotions in mind. When your companion feels respected, it's more likely that they'll return that respect. Honesty happens because empathy creates a space where others feel supported. Knowing they have your full attention and care, your companions are more open to sharing their ideas, needs, and concerns. You encourage a more authentic and honest discussion. Finally, collaboration becomes more likely because you're able to see things from another's perspective. You understand the meaning and emotions behind their message, and that makes it easier to work together and build creative solutions. So, how can you add empathy to your communication? Here are four practical tips that you can follow to create richer conversations and become a more empathetic communicator. First, practice active listening. Be fully present in the moment and don't get distracted. Focus on this person's words, inflection, and body language. Try to imagine the situation from their perspective. Second, acknowledge and paraphrase what you've heard. Say, I understand how difficult this is, or I can see how upset you are. Make sure you're on target by paraphrasing. Acknowledge the other person's emotions and show that you want to understand. That communicates support. Third, give validation. Help this person feel less isolated in the experience by validating their emotions. You might say, I understand your pain, or I know this can be confusing. Finally, offer your support and respond with care. That response can come in many forms. Sometimes it's lending an empathetic ear. It's letting your companion know they're not alone. You might say, I'm sorry you're going through this. I know what that feels like and I'm here if you need to talk. Other times the person may want your advice or assistance, but don't assume, ask them. You might say, I'd like to help if I can. It's a simple gesture and it shows compassionate empathy. When you offer that support, be careful not to minimize the person's experience. Don't tell them how they should feel. Don't try to steal the person's thunder by one-upping or one-downing them. And don't start your sentence with, at least, or look on the bright side. It minimizes their experience. Empathy is feeling with someone. It's showing them that you're in their corner and you understand. Remember those four steps to having empathy the next time you communicate, and you'll encourage successful conversations built on respect, honesty, and collaboration. Have you ever struggled to empathize with someone? Maybe you both were just too different from one another, or perhaps there was too much disagreement. If so, you likely experienced an empathy roadblock. Empathy roadblocks are things that get in the way of our understanding. They stop us from seeing something through another's eyes. Whether or not they're intentional, these barriers cause us to shut others out. And as a result, others may close themselves off to us. When we give in to empathy roadblocks, we obstruct our ability to both understand and be understood. Here are four reasons why you might struggle to experience empathy. First, internal and external distractions sometimes get in the way. If you're emotionally overwhelmed, you might be too distracted to consider someone else's emotions. Or if you're multitasking and focusing on things around you, you might miss the person's message. It's hard to understand someone when we're not paying attention. Another roadblock involves making assumptions. This happens when we base our understanding on our own viewpoints rather than the other person's. 
We jump to conclusions. We assume we know someone's story before they finish telling it. A third roadblock happens when we disagree with another's position. When we have the mentality, I'm right, you're wrong, there's little room for empathy. We focus on debating rather than understanding. Finally, our personal biases and judgments can also act as roadblocks. When we view others as outsiders, it leads to an us versus them mindset. We can't relate to the other person and we struggle to see things from their perspective. Thankfully, through practice, we can remove those common empathy roadblocks and become better communicators. Here are four tips that you can follow. First, be in the moment. If you're emotionally overwhelmed, ask if you can talk later. Also, don't multitask. Remove all distractions and give the other person your undivided attention. That means focusing on the speaker's words, body language, and inflection. Second, don't make assumptions. When you assume what others are thinking, you see things from your perspective instead of theirs. Consider how you might not know the full story. Ask questions and listen. If you're jumping to conclusions, take a moment to reconsider. Third, listen to understand, not to reply or argue. Even if you disagree, find common ground emotionally, not necessarily intellectually. You don't need to agree with someone to understand them. Instead, consider their feelings and acknowledge those emotions. Fourth, challenge your biases. Keep an open mind and ask yourself, why do I think this? Why am I judging this person? Often, biases happen because we're not informed. Educate yourself. See others as individuals instead of members of a social group. Seek to build a connection by considering shared interests or experiences you might have with this person. By looking outside of yourself and focusing on how others think and feel, you can overcome common empathy roadblocks. Remember these roadblocks and their solutions and you'll become a more effective and empathetic communicator. As you've likely experienced, it's not always easy to be empathetic. Sometimes it's difficult to relate to and understand others. It takes concentration and work. But empathy is a skill, and like all skills, it can be developed. With careful focus and practice, you can make empathy a habit. You can become more in tune with others. So, how do you improve your ability to empathize with others? Here are four strategies you can follow to build empathy. First, exercise your emotional awareness. Think about it. If you're not aware of your emotional reactions, then how can you understand someone else's? Spend a few moments a day reflecting on your feelings. Ask yourself, what's my mood right now? Why do I feel like this? By asking these questions, you'll find it easier to relate to the emotions of others. Second, expand your empathetic concern by observing others. Look outside of yourself. Think about what kind of day these people might be having based on their behaviors and nonverbal expressions. Stay curious. Curiosity is one of the first steps toward building empathy. Third, challenge your assumptions by speaking with strangers. Talk to those outside of your social circle. Try to understand that person's world. By connecting with strangers, you'll further open your empathetic mind. Finally, practice perspective taking. That means clearing your mind and taking on someone else's perspective. Ask yourself, if that were my story, how would I view this situation? How would I react? These questions can help build your imagination skills. As you continue to develop these habits, keep in mind that you can ask questions to improve your understanding of someone's emotions. If you're struggling to relate to someone else, consider what information you're missing. Ask thoughtful questions to uncover those gaps. You might ask, what was that like? Or, could you tell me more about that? These questions will stop you from making assumptions. Keep these tips in mind, continue to develop your curiosity, observation, and questioning skills, and you'll improve your ability to empathize and connect with those around you.